Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00. This is part 4 of our 5 part series comparing and contrasting the various augmentations of the different classes of Spartans. Now we've already covered nerve, muscle and skeletal augmentations, all of which are linked below, and today we move on to the eye augmentations of the Spartan classes. So let's dive in and find out the specifics before we give our final comparison. And let's continue to follow the trend we've so far set and start with the Spartan 2s. The Spartan 2s received the occipital capillary reversal augmentation. As described in the Fall of Reach and Halsey's journal, surgery is performed on the occipital lobe of the left cerebral hemisphere of the brain. The occipital lobe is the visual processing center of the brain containing most of the anatomical regions of the visual cortex. The surgeon performs a procedure on the capillaries, the smallest of the body's blood vessels, to reverse the direction of blood flow in each capillary to boost the blood flow beneath the rods and cones of the subject's retina. The rods and cones of the eye are the light-sensitive receptors located in the back of the eye. Together they are able to detect movement, light and colour and relay that information back to the brain. This procedure produces a marked increase in visual perception. 11% of subjects could face retinal rejection and detachment, causing permanent blindness. So in this, a small section of the skull is removed and the surgeon then begins the process of rearranging and re-engineering the capillaries, being the smallest blood-carrying structures of the circulatory system, thereby increasing the amount of oxygenated blood available to the retinas. Once completed, the section of the skull is replaced and fixed into position. The incision site is closed and sutured and the subject's head is then wrapped in bandages. The surgery results in a marked visual perception increase, including the ability to see in near perpetual darkness, see finer levels of detail, and ability to detect more subtle movements from a distance, an enhanced colour and contrast perception. This augmentation also comes with the highest risks of complications of any of the other augmentations given to the Spartan 2s, with 11% of people going completely blind. The Spartan 3's augmentation achieves similar results, but in a very different manner. The details we have on the augmentations are very limited, but also very telling. 88947OP24 Retina Inversion Stabilizer Drug Color sharpness is significantly improved upon and night vision is heightened. Now the term retina inversion stabilizer drug is yet another instance where the terminology used to describe the drug reveals it is either a primer or a supporting augmentation. In this particular case, a supporting one. In the normal human eye, and indeed in all vertebrate animals, the retina is inverted in the sense that the light sensing cells are in the back of the retina so that light has to pass through layers of neurons and capillaries that feed each of the rods and the cones oxygenated blood and send their signals to the brain. The ganglion cells whose axons form the optic nerve are at the front of the retina. Therefore, the optic nerve must cross through the retina en route to the brain. In this region, there are no photoreceptors giving rise to the blind spot that we all experience. The very fact that light has to pass through the layers of tissue before reaching the photoreceptors of the eye, even if those layers are highly transmissive to light, still means that there is a degree of photoabsorption that takes place before the light actually reaches the rods and cones, limiting the ability for humans to see in the dark. Other animals, such as felines and canines for example, get around this by first having a pupil that dilates markedly larger than the human pupil can but also by having a tapetum lucidum layer in the eye, a highly reflective layer that allows light to be reflected within the eye, maximizing how much light actually falls on the photoreceptors, as opposed to being absorbed by the inner surface of the eye. While this would, at face value, appear to be a logical augmentation to factor into the Spartan's augmentation sets, in reality the reflections within the eye caused by the tapetum lucidum also somewhat have a negative effect on the visual clarity and focus in low light level environments due to light bouncing around inside of the eye and falling on the photoreceptors from different vectors. This causes the peripheral of the vision to be blurry, meaning creatures with this layer lack the otherwise crystal clear clarity of vision enjoyed during daylight hours. Humans would be no exception to this. 
So, to maintain crisp focus and clarity, but also increase the amount of light that reaches the photoreceptors of the eye, the retina is inverted. This must be performed surgically, where the retina is effectively reworked, sinking the nerves and capillaries below the rods and cones of the eye, thereby placing the photoreceptive sensors of the eye on the surface of the retina and the veins and neural axons are between the rods and cones and the actual back of the eye. Removing the veins and nerves from the path of incoming light allows more light to reach the rods and cones and thus results in a significant improvement in night vision and colour perception. The actual aforementioned drug used in this augmentation appears to be used as simply a stabiliser drug for the inversion surgery, reducing the chances of retinal detachment and thus permanent blindness post-surgery. This chemical evidently also has the side effect of altering the levels of melanin found in the iris of the eye, likely due to chemical molecular bonding lancing the melanin out of the iris. This is made evident by the colour of Carter's iris changing from brown to blue while he received his chemical augmentations. Since the brown colour of the eyes is caused by the existence of melanin in the iris, the sudden change to blue indicates that the melanin, at least in Carter's case, was broken down very rapidly, diluting his brown eyes to bright blue. Information on the Spartan 4's augmentation of the eyes is even smaller. Corneal implants are provided improving the subject's eyesight and night vision. That is literally all we get. That being said, we have real-world equivalents for this, so from this we can infer some interesting details and from the effects experienced and reported upon by Spartan Edward Buck, we get a feel for how effective it is. So a real-world example of a similar augmentation would be people who experienced cataracts. Cataracts are a cloudiness that develops in the natural lens of the eye. In cataract surgery, the natural lens is removed and replaced by an artificial lens that lasts a lifetime. It's usually plastic, but still focuses light just as well as an organic healthy lens and thus returns visual clarity to the wearer. But this usually results in, at best, normal human 2020 vision. In the Spartans' case, it is better than 2020 vision. There is another surgery that can be performed using an artificial lens that focuses light better than the normal organic lens of the human eye. A company called Ocumetrics have developed their bionic lens, which does exactly that. However, the fact that it's said that the Spartan 4s have superior night vision also suggests that there is another element to this lens. And we do now have dual layer nanomaterials that can absorb normally invisible infrared light and then re-emit that light in the visible spectrum, basically rendering invisible infrared light visible. So from the very brief description of the Spartan 4's augmentation, I believe it's likely that it's a combination of a bionic lens with something like this dual layer nanomaterial. So let's get a feel for exactly what happens in order for this surgery to be performed. Bearing in mind this is something that we could probably do now. The surgeon would cut a very small incision vector, usually around 2.1 millimeters in length, on the edge of the cornea, where small tools would then access behind the cornea. Here, the natural lens of the eye would be removed and be replaced by this bionic lens that also has the dual layer nanomaterial layered on the surface of it. Time would then be taken to clear the vitreous, the fluid inside of the eyes of any debris or floaters, with the artificial lens being implanted and affixed to the muscles behind the iris. This lens is near optically perfect and focuses light approximately four times better than the organic lens of the eye, meaning that Spartans on average would have 80-20 vision and able to read text from 80 feet away that a normal person can only read from 20 feet away. Once implanted, the incision seals itself and the eyes heal themselves thereafter, granting the Spartan superhuman vision and night vision, but also bearing in mind that the advanced technology could mean that other spectrums of invisible light could be rendered visible with advanced nanomaterial technology. So, to compare the augmentations, the Spartan 2's augmentation provides the highest risk percentage, at 11% for total blindness, but grants the person the ability to see in pitch black and have enhanced colour, contrast, saturation and brightness, but involves what is basically a form of brain surgery to achieve. 
The threes involve catalytic injections and eye surgery to effectively peel the retina off the back of your eye and flip it around the other way, which is pretty gross, but again has the same net effect on visual acuity. And finally, the Spartan 4's augmentation is basically something approximating as simple and straightforward as laser eye surgery but again gives superhuman visual acuity, but also allows the Spartan, in theory at least, to see spectrums of light outside of the normal human range, which is something the other Spartans can't. Given the risks and level of invasiveness, I for one would definitely opt for the Spartan 4 augmentation. You get superhuman visual acuity for the rest of your life, no invasive surgeries or risk of blindness, and you're able to see spectrums of light outside of the normal range, plus an impressively brief recovery period. Once again, of the three eye augmentations presented here, I'd love to hear what you'd be most comfortable having were you given a choice. And until next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider hitting the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Be sure to like the video if you did, and pop a comment below on what you'd like me to cover next. I just want to take a moment to thank my patrons, Spartan10148, the Metarch of my facility, Falcon, Sylphia, Mikhail, Ashley, Jordan, and Esoteric Sight, my dutiful monitors, Darian, Legions Lost, Lab Rat, Spartan0137, Jacob Kemp, Sean, Element Zero, J3, Mr. Keys, Gungslinger, Evermore, Personal Devil, Aldeas, Toxic, Scion Esports, Gem Saber, and Relentless, my diligent submonitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, my loyal enforcers, and all other patrons who continue to support the channel. If you want your name on the end of the video and some perks earned along the way, head over to Patreon and consider supporting the channel yourself. Big shout out to my Tier 0 Transcendent YouTube members, Spartan137, Jacob Kemp, Talia, Fenrir, Bornsteller, Jimbo, and Balaz, and all the other YouTube members keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy, with a special mention to the Accursed Hunter. Shout out to John due to the mathematical formula used to determine the area within a pentadodecahedron. <laughs> Oh, and Lena, because that sandwich. And <laughs> remember, there are tons of ways to support the channel and keep my installation pumping out content at a breakneck speed. Much love to you all, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain. <laughs>